Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Michael Levan and welcome to my section on Cloud Native Data Management Day called Stateful versus Stateless for Kubernetes. So I want to start off with a story. Now this story goes something like a lot of people have probably heard at this point. I have a monolithic application. I can't run it in containers. I have a application that requires me to keep my data or have stateful data so I can't run it in a container. Now this is such a common misconception that I feel like we probably hear a lot, especially if you're in the Kubernetes world a ton. You're going to hear those two things. I know I've heard them at work, consulting, through other engineers, etc. Now the problem is, is that because a lot of people think that, that's typically the direction that a lot of engineers will go in. However, we're here today to debunk that. So I want to just briefly show a definition here, which is what a monolithic application is. So it's really a single tiered application where the UI, the data access, everything is combined into a single program. So there's a ton of dependencies. It's not like a microservice because a microservice has no dependencies. Essentially, every container or pod or deployment has its own application. So microservices have zero dependencies and everything is split up. So the UI would be a separate piece of the pie than the data access would be. And you're gonna typically see stateless in microservices because there are no dependencies. So I want everybody to keep that, those stories in mind there really where it's around, you know, I can't run my application because I need to be able to save my data or I can't really run this container because I don't have a stateless application. So let's actually dive into stateless and stateful. So first things first, what is stateless? Well, really in short, it's a container that can be thrown away. Now don't get this confused with ephemeral containers by definition, all containers should be ephemeral. You should be able to exit a container, restart a container, kill a container, and it should never matter because you should never persist the data on the container, which is perfectly normal. And you can still have stateful data. We're going to talk about that in a second, but really what we're talking about with stateless is it's a container that can be thrown away and there's no persistence needed. So no data needs to be saved, any, saved anywhere. No data needs to be persisted and it is truly ephemeral. So a container can come up, a container can go down, it can come back up, it doesn't matter. Now stateful, I want you to keep in mind that containers are still ephemeral, but the data isn't. And that data needs to be kept around. It needs to be saved somewhere. Now you're gonna typically see this in volumes, which we're gonna talk about, or, and this is pretty common I would say, it essentially has to connect to some database. So the container, let's say you're running a MySQL container, if that container goes down, it's obviously gonna be a huge issue because it's ephemeral. So that data goes bye-bye. All containers have volumes, but a lot of them are ephemeral unless you specify it to not be. And because of that, you'll typically see a lot of people connecting the database backends like RDS, for example, in AWS. So when we're thinking about stateful, we wanna think about data that needs to be kept around. And remember, you can 100% have, say, a MySQL container running, that's perfectly fine. The problem is, is that you need to ensure that you either have some type of connection to a database somewhere, or you need to make sure that you have some sort of volume set up. That way, all of that data can be persisted, saved, and backed up. So let's talk about Kubernetes storage types here. And really, it's just, it's almost two storage types. The first one is a volume. So a volume, really you're gonna think about it like a hard disk or a piece of a hard disk. So for example, you can go into a container and you can say, hey, I want this container to have 20 gigabytes of data stored here at this volume mount. And then that volume mount will be backed up and all that good stuff. It'll be just like a standard hard drive. It solves that ephemeral problem with containers. Because as I said earlier, all containers have a volume associated with them, just like all containers have CPU usage and memory usage. The biggest problem is, is if you don't set up a specific volume, that data is just gonna be thrown away when the container restarts, when it exits, etc. And then persistent volumes are essentially a piece of storage in the cluster 
that has been provisioned by an administrator or an engineer somewhere or dynamically provisioned using a storage class. And then finally we have volume snapshots and a volume snapshot is essentially a copy of a volume's content. So if you've ever been in the virtualization world, maybe ESXi, maybe VMware, vCenter, you had snapshots and what you could do is you could take a snapshot, a point in time of a virtual machine. And then that virtual machine you could use to restore it in a couple hours or in a day or something like that. Now do keep in mind that snapshots, it's not a backup, it's just a copy. I have a piece of code here and essentially what this code shows is a stateful set. So at this point you may be wondering, well, what's a stateful set? Think about it for a second. A stateful set is a kind of Kubernetes deployment for, you guessed it, stateful applications. Now what I want you to look at is under containers, you're going to see something called a volume mount. And then you're going to see the name of the volume mount and the mount path. Now if you want to store any persistent data, any stateful data, you can absolutely do so using a stateful set. And this isn't the only way. We're going to see another way to do this with a database in just a second. But the idea here is, is that you have some application, it requires you to persist and store some data, but you still want to be able to containerize your application and you still want to be able to use Kubernetes to orchestrate it. And if you want to do that, you can use a stateful set, just like this example right here, you can store the volume mounts, which is essentially just a path. So that path there where it says dot, 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 you can point that to some path on your Linux box. And then that's where that data would be saved. Okay, so now I wanna show something for MySQL. Now this is one version of the piece of MySQL we're gonna take a look at, but then we're also gonna take a look at another piece of MySQL later on to connect to an RDS database. So as you can see, this Kubernetes manifest is a kind of deployment. That's the kind. The kind is deployment, just like we saw over here, the kind of stateful set. The kind here is deployment. Now, if you look under containers, you're going to notice that we're using a MySQL container and that MySQL container or Docker image rather has environment variables and it has ports and more importantly, it has volume mounts and volumes. So now take a look at that under volume mounts. You can see that you can call it essentially whatever you want. That's really just, you know, any name you could put there, but the mount path is super important. And that mount path is, for example, here under slash var slash lib slash MySQL. Now that's just the mount. So that's, for example, if you're just running that locally, you're just storing it on the same server that Kubernetes is running on. But as you can see here, there's a volumes as well. And that volume section is again using the same name as the volume mount but it's actually creating a volume itself, a persistent volume claim. And in this case, it's being called MySQL PV for, that stands for persist persistent volume claim. So now we're actually specifying a mount and then we're creating a volume. And that's the end of the slideshow here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch screens and we're gonna jump into an AWS UI really quick. So as you can see here, I'm at my AWS console and in my AWS console, I'm at my new database that I called MySQL RDS. And what is this? This is a RDS database inside of AWS that's using the MySQL engine. And as we can see here, if I just go ahead and refresh actually, we'll see the status that it's available. We can see any current activity, which there's nothing going on in the engine. So we are in fact using MySQL. And then the connectivity information here. So this is going to be my endpoint. This is the port, the VPC that it's under, the availability zone, security groups, etc. And then if I go to EC2 management, we can see here that I have an inbound rule for my RDS database right here, and it's over port 3306. So this is the database that I'm going to connect to, and I'm going to give you this scenario here, and I feel like this scenario comes up quite often. Let's say you have an application, it requires stateful data to be stored inside of a database. Well, how could you do that? You could of course connect to any MySQL instance, whether it's on-prem, AWS, Azure, etc. And how you do that is you can use Kubernetes, for example, or maybe you can use 
Docker Compose or a Docker file to build your container, build the connection string in, and then deploy that application over to Kubernetes. So let's go ahead and head over to VS Code really quick. And we're gonna see exactly what this looks like. All right, so I am here at VS Code. I have my Docker Compose file up. And if we look under services, we can see that I'm using a MySQL latest image. I'm using a container name I just called a MySQL RDS1. Now the real bread and butter here is under environment. So notice that I have a MySQL host and that MySQL host is connecting to RDS. I have my MySQL username, my password, my root password. Now, of course, if this was production, I would put these passwords into some secret manager and call them in an environment file or something like that. But for demo purposes, I just wanted to show you what this kind of looks like. So this is the way that I can connect a container, a MySQL container to RDS and use that as the host. So if I run, for example, Docker compose up, we can go ahead and we can give this a few minutes here and we're going to be able to see that it's actually connecting to RDS to be able to use as the host. And that'll go ahead and wrap up my session on stateful versus stateless. Thank you everybody for watching. Really do appreciate it. And I hope that you enjoyed.